All right, today we are putting a whiteboard or dry erase board on a finished wall. So as you can see here, I've got uh, my tape lines. So what I did is I went through and I just made little tick marks where the lines are supposed to be, drew a pencil line with a straight edge, and then taped off that edge with our delicate surface frog tape. So to get started, we're gonna prime the walls and we are using Grip and Seal, which is a bonding primer to make sure that we have good adhesion to a, a finished painted wall. With a solid epoxy finish, you're not gonna get ghosting like you would on less expensive options for whiteboard paint. And it will also hold up quite a bit better since this is a playroom, so it's probably gonna take some rough wear. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and roll out our first coat of primer. We're gonna do two just to make sure that it's a, a good solid white color. Um, we'll roll it out, give it probably a good hour, hour and a half to dry down and get our second coat on there. And from there, we'll get it 24 hours to fully set up. That way we're not sealing in any moisture when we go over it with our epoxy. So, as you can see, when I was rolling it, I would roll it on, kind of even it out the paint, and then go back and very lightly dry roll in one direction. And that is so I can get rid of any heavy spots, any roller marks, or anything like that, giving us as smooth a surface as possible, because it will make writing on with the dry erase much more effective. So that covered pretty well. So we've got pretty good solid white going for us and that, uh, that helps a great deal when we get into the, uh, the whiteboard finish. So from here, we're gonna give it 24 hours to dry down so it's good and dry and we're not sealing in any moisture. And then we'll give it a light sand just to knock down any high points so we have a good writing surface once we get to our uh, epoxy. Now the wall is sanded, we're just going to go ahead and wipe it down with a, a slightly damp rag just to get as much of the dust off as we can, so that way you have good adhesion with our finished coat. So, this Notables it is a Benjamin Moore product, it is what we're using for our dry erase finish coat. There are a lot of products on the market. Uh, the reason we're using this is because it is probably one of the most durable products there is. It is a two-part epoxy, and it will hold up to a five-year-old because this is a playroom, so it's going to take some abuse. So when you're choosing a product, you know, take all things into consideration. There are products that are considerably less expensive, but if they're not going to be taking as much wear and abuse as a playroom, you can go a little less expensive with your product, and it will hold up just fine. But with the more expensive products, mainly the epoxies, you will not get the ghosting. So when you wipe it, you'll see you'll still see color left over. That's because the surface of the finish starts to get pitted and the pigment from the markers gets stuck in that. And so it doesn't completely wipe off cleanly. So you're not gonna get that with an epoxy. So that's why we're using it in this, this setting. All right, so our primer has been allowed to dry for 24 hours. Now we're gonna go ahead and mix up our epoxy. So it comes in two parts, part A and part B. Together they make up about a quart of epoxy. So, and that quart covers about 50 square feet. So what we have here is approximately 67 square feet. So we need two of them so we get full coverage across the entire surface. And so just a couple things to you will be aware of when you're mixing up epoxy. Each one is slightly different. So most definitely read your instructions. Um, this particular product has a pot life of about four hours, meaning once you mix it up, you have to use it within four hours or it's no longer any good. With this particular product, it is a second wet coat product 
meaning we're gonna put the first coat on, give it about five to 10 minutes, and go right into the second coat before it fully cures. So the separate coats are bonding to each other while they're still wet, giving you a uniform uh, film across the surface. All right, uh, now so to mix it up, I have here just a little, little mixing paddle that goes on the end of the drill. It uh, mixes it much more effectively than just with a stir stick. So we're gonna go ahead and dump these in, both parts A, and then we'll dump in our part B of both, and you go ahead and mix it up. All right, so we've got our, our epoxy mixed up. Um, after we get it all mixed up, we're gonna let it sit for a good five to 10 minutes. That way, any of the air bubbles that may have been worked in there, mixed in there when we were mixing it up, have a chance to just kind of work their way out. In the meantime, uh, this being a thinner product, we're going to go ahead and run some tape and drip along the bottom edge, just so in case we have any drips or runs, that way it doesn't get onto the finished wall, baseboard, or floor. So this kit came with the roller that they recommend for it. It's a, it is a microfiber 5 16 roller. So it's a pretty thin nap, but it will give you a smooth, uh, uniform finish. So, uh, just a word of caution, epoxies can have a pretty strong smell. So you're gonna wanna make sure you're in a well ventilated area. And if you're, you know, pretty susceptible to strong odors, it might be a good idea to wear a respirator. Um, in this case, we have a window with windows right here, so it makes it really easy just to uh, open those up and let the uh, the gas, the off gas, is uh, bent out that way. All right. Again, this product is pretty thin, so you don't want to overload your roller, otherwise it's going to drip all over the place. And another way you can help minimize the amount of drips is when you have a fully loaded roller, make your first pass rolling up. That way the product kind of, you're kind of squeegeeing it up the wall rather than the drips falling down all over the place. So we've given it about 30 minutes. Um, that's just long enough for the, the epoxy just to start to set up. Uh, now we can go ahead and pull the tape. And when you're pulling the tape, you want to pull it at a 45 degree angle to the wall. And that will, that edge of the tape will almost act like a knife and cut the, uh, the film rather so it doesn't lift paint off of the wall. So when you're pulling your tape, you want to use steady, even pressure. You don't want to jerk it real fast because then you'll start to you'll start to set up a situation where you're going to tear the paint or pull chunks off the wall. So it's real easy, consistent pressure. Securely, you should end up with some pretty clean sharp lines. All right, and now we're about as far as we can go with this. So, the this particular product takes about four hours to dry to the touch. 
and then an additional seven days to reach full cure, and then it can be used as a dry erase board. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If uh, you'd like to see more from Triple Painting, just scroll down and check the links. I'm sure we'll find we have what you're looking for. Thanks.